Hello and welcome to Channel 2S. I'm your host, Second Soundwave, and today's video is not a review of the high grade Dynamas, nor is it a review of the high grade High New Gundam, because today's video is, believe it or not, an episode of Dumplin' News. Why am I doing it this way, you may ask? Well, my microphone that I've been using for the last seven years has finally decided to die, and I have no way of recording audio for further Gunplay News episodes until I can set up my other audio equipment, and that will take a while. So, in the meantime, it's just a temporary solution. I will be doing Gunplay News like this. I'll talk about the kits like this, and when I want to show you pictures, I'll do that. So, got that all cleared up? Okay, good. So the last thing we've gotten at retail was the high-grade Barbatos Lupus and Option Set 5. These were both released in the last week of September to coincide with the start of Iron-Blooded Orphan Season 2. And if you haven't watched it already, you should because it's pretty darn cool. In fact, in the very first episode of the second season, their sort of first new enemy that they face is a group of space pirates. And the mobile suit that is kind of the flagship suit for that team of space pirates is the Hugo. And the Hugo is actually being released either today or tomorrow, depending on when this video is going up. So, we of course have inbox images of it. And a bunch of other pictures showing off all the cool stuff it does. And how do I know this is being used by the Space Pirates, you may ask? Well, there's this cool thing they're doing now where all of the packaging all of the manuals in their entirety for everything from Iron Blood Orphan Season 2 will be bilingual. So everything from the little blurbs about the weapons to the thing where they talk about the actual kit and universe, every single piece of text on it is going to be in Japanese and in English. Which is awesome because now you can read all that history and tech information that you couldn't read before. Which is awesome because now you can read all that history and tech information that you couldn't read before. And then next, after the Hugo, we are getting the region lays. As you can see, the box art is pretty awesome looking. And we've also got some pictures of him showing off his awesome weapons. Looking really cool, looking really cool. I have to say, I kind of understand why they didn't make a teal now, because it seems like each of the Yallerhorn sort of command suits has its own color. And since they already made the Grey's Ritter teal, they kind of had to go with something else for the region lays. So, I'm okay with it. It makes sense. And then there's the 1-100 Barbatos Lupus. It's looking really awesome, and I do like that they included all the weapons it's supposed to have with this version. And, of course, it poses really well because it's the 1-100. Then there's the Gay Rail. We do have some new pictures of this. Actually, quite a few new pictures of it. Not sure if I'm going to show all of them. I'm just going to toss up a couple right here. But there's a couple pictures here I wanted to give specific mention to because, first of all, I remember mentioning last time that the axe weapon that he has, or hammer, or whatever that's supposed to be, was looking a little hollow on the underside, but it actually looks like it's a little more filled out now, like there's this kind of panel on the bottom that covers up a lot of the gaps. And then the head actually looks like it has a translucent little red piece for the eye, which looks really cool, and I hope that's going to be how it is in the final kit. And there's also some new pictures of the Shiden and Gujion Full City, but there's nothing really new to show here, so I'm just going to toss them up for a few seconds. Okay, option set 7. This is two sets down the line, I think. And this comes with some new guns. So we got a gun for the Barbatos Lupus. And then we have this really cool belt-fed machine gun for the region lays. To be honest, I'm kind of wishing that one came with the kit itself because it just looks so awesome, way better than that little pistol thing the stock kit comes with. And then there's just some other miscellaneous little weapons and hands. Then we have a new shot of the 1-100 Gundam Vidar drawing his lance. And what's interesting about this picture is if you look carefully, it looks like there are more than one blade stored in his hip skirt, so I'm kind of thinking this might end up being kind of an Attack on Titan thing, where, like, as the blade gets dull, he can, like, jettison it and then, like, draw another blade out of his hip skirts, which looks really cool, and as you can see in that image, there is actually enough articulation on the 100 for him to properly draw out his sword, which is awesome, because I always love it when that's the case with a kit where they can, like, properly draw out their weapon from its storage. 
And then there's some more kits that we've seen uh, these pictures of before, but these are like more high resolution versions of them as opposed to the magazine scans. So I'm just going to cycle through those pretty quick. There's nothing really fancy to say here. Then we have the origin kits. First off, the Bugu, which is still looking absolutely hideous, but I mean, it's technically accurate, so whatever. Good on them, I guess. And then Sharzaku 2, which still has that really, really cool looking belt fed machine gun. They seem to be doing a lot of those now, and I'm totally okay with that. And then, of course, we have official images of the cat guy and dog guy, or petite guy cat and dog version. I'm not exactly sure what they're calling them, but they're like petite guys, but they're a dog and a cat instead of bears. Yay. And then finally, we have an image of the real grade build strikes build booster separated from the rest of the kit. And then finally, this is the big news tidbit here. This is looking pretty cool. I'm really excited for this. The big December kit for Iron-Blooded Orphans is going to be a mobile armor. Yeah, that's right. This thing is going to be coming out in December, 3,000 yen. Looks absolutely massive, but at the same time very spindly, very agile. Kind of almost looks a little like something from Metal Gear to me. It just looks awesome. Can't wait to see how this thing looks. We've just got that silhouette to go off of, but I'm sure it's going to be awesome. So that just about wraps it up for tonight's Gunpla News. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. I apologize for the more casual format of this one. It's just a temporary thing until I get a better recording set up. So. so if you're new here, uh, be sure to subscribe. Not all my videos are quite this casual. I usually put a little bit more professionalism into them, but admittedly not a whole lot more. Anyway, uh, Feel free to leave a comment below. I always love chatting with you guys down there in the comments, and I will see you next time.